Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the Golden Opportunities Coaching YouTube channel. Welcome to those of you who are new. Welcome back to those of you who see the mentors of what we do around here. What we do around here is bring about conversations of a psychological, mental health, and emotional health paradigm. Nope, we bring about conversations of a uh, pro wrestling logic approach. And this is the AEW um, Rampage review for a um, short span of time. That is the 17th of... Um, June 2022, um, not the best show, not the worst show, obviously AEW continues to have too many talents and some of the people that they put on national television don't belong, but they don't really seem to care, so uh, perhaps I'm overreacting my caring myself, who knows. Anyway, um, we move to, one good thing about this show is it's one hour in length and it moves pretty quickly. This is taped in St. Louis, Excalibur Taz, Chris Jericho on commentary along with Lord Steven Regal, the opening match. Uh, Moxley defeats Dante Morton, 11.58. There's no reason this needs to go that long. Jericho trashes the blood, uh, Blackpool Fight Club and says anyone in Blackpool is a stupid idiot. Regal is uh, surprised that Jericho is involved, but called Jericho uh, a name that shouldn't be Googled. And Moxley and Martin... Do the test of strength, uh, transition into an arm bar by Moxley, and then goes into headlocks. Uh, Moxley goes back to the side headlock. After a quick exchange, Martin escapes and continue, counters a hip toss into a head scissors. Martin's up with a shotgun drop kick and sends Moxley out to the floor. Moxley and Martin exchange chops, and uh, Moxley then whips Martin into the buckles. Hits a side backbreaker and goes into a split screen. After split screen, Moxley locks Martin in Texas Cloverleaf. Moxley then turns it into a variation of Regal Stretch and buckled knees into Martin's head with a near fall. Martin then catches Moxley, forward flipping Rana off the ropes. Moxley then uses a butterfly suplex onto Martin for near fall. Martin then ducks sliding Lariat. Uh, catches Moxley in a Gamagiri and sends Moxley in out to the floor. Uh, comes up with a springboard plancha back in the ring. Martin hits a top rope crossbody for near fall. Martin up with the nose dive, but Moxley avoids it and catches Martin with a choke. Martin escapes, climbing the ropes. Moxley follows Martin up the ropes. Uh, Martin catches Moxley. I've been lance sliced bread for a near fall. Martin and Moxley exchange strikes and kicks until he hits the cutter out of the nowhere position. Martin then gets a near fall off the sunset flip. But Moxley comes back with a lariat. Moxley then battles. Moxley then hits a hammer and elbows uh, locking on the stretch and a hammer lock on the mat. And Moxley ta or, uh, Martin taps out. Decent enough match. I don't think it needed to be this long. Regal leaves commentary and makes another joke about Jericho. And the, we eventually will see Jericho bald, which I think would be an improvement. Uh, Tony Schiavone interviews Strickland and Lee. Strickland uh, argued that the Battle Royal is a singles competition, and Lee would have put Strickland out when given a chance anyway, but still wants to be tag team. Lee goes to leave, but then interrupts by powerhouse Hobbs and Ricky Starks. Dueling promos from the House of Black and Death Triangle. Malachi Black have a match on Wednesday for the All-Atlantic 4-Way. This just seems like a lot of extra push. Anyway, Max Caster in the Gun Club with Anthony Bowens and Billy Gunn defeated Leon Ruff and Bear Country. 1 minute 15 seconds. Why even have them get dressed for that? Max Caster has something to say, but nobody... Uh, made him sign an NDA. This was his best rap in a while. Ruff was on NXT, and um, basically there's a quick draw from Austin Gunn. Top rope elbow from Caster. Takes care of Ruff, and Caster gets an easy pin. Lexi Nair interviews Hook. Hook will face New Japan's pr top prospect on Rampage. Uh, next, uh, basically Dan Helson interrupts, but Hook tells him, I've got this hook speaks and then uh, Jade Cargill with 
Uh, Kira Hogan and Stokely Hathaway defeat Lula and Nightingale for the TBS Championship 456. Hathaway joins commentary team, and uh, this is the uh, Cargill's considered sports entertainer of the week. A Nightingale goes for the pounce. Cargill avoids the movie and hits Nightingale with a pump kick. Uh, this leads to the finish. Nightingale is uh, gets up off the floor after split screen commercial. Nightingale hits Cargill with a cannonball in the corner. Cargill comes back with a pedigree style maneuver and uh, jaded slam for the pinfall. Uh, Athena versus Cargill looks increasingly. Like a uh, temporary thing. Um, then we go to uh, hype video for Satman Singh and Jay Lethal taking a shot at Samoa Joe not being a fighting ROH television champion. ROH doesn't even have TV yet. Uh, where is Joe supposed to defend this? Anyway, Forbidden Door next Sunday, 626, Moxley and Tanahashi. Uh, for the AEW interim title, Miro versus Pack versus Malachi Black or Penta Skiro versus New Japan's representative for the Atlantic Championship. Um, Mizaru Suzuki, Chris Jericho, Sammy Guevara, Eddie Kingston, Willi Yuta, and Shumini Urimuni. Um, Thunder Rosa versus Tony Storm for the Women's Championship. FTR versus Jeff Cobb and Great Khan versus Trapungi, uh Vice. Winner takes all ROH and IWGP Tag Team Championships. Uh, anyway, Will Ospreay versus Orange Cassidy. And Dynamite on Wednesday, Aussie Open vers- and Will Ospreay versus Orange Cassidy and Rapungi Vice. Malachi Black versus Penta to qualify for the All-Atlantic Championship. Jericho and Lance Archer versus Moxley and Tanahashi. Darby Allen versus Bobby Fish, 11:45. Um, not a bad match. O'Reilly stays in the back for the match. Allen promises to break Fisher's leg in a pre-match promo. Allen turns his back on Fisher and immediately attack with a kick to Allen's leg. Dragon Screw leg whip sends Allen to the floor. Fish sends him back into the ring apron. Uh, ugly collision on the floor. Allen catches Fish's knee to the head, but Allen, uh, landed awkwardly on the arena floor. Back in the ring, Fish hits tilt a well backbreaker. This is a springboard moonsault. Allen hit Fish with a high speed. Tope on the floor. Fish attacks Allen's leg again and worked him over with body shots. Another dragon screw leg whip. And Allen goes into the ring barricade. Fish dominates during the split screen and uh, spends time working over the leg. Fish hit with a scorpion death drop. Allen hits a code red near fall. Fish then escapes to the floor. Allen hits him with a coffin drop. Off the chope, off the top rope, and then Fish catches Allen with a spear through the ropes, and both tumbles to the floor. Uh, Fish then hits with a knee midsection and throws Allen into the ring stairs. But they both fight on the apron. Fish is German suplex. Allen sends him bouncing off the apron. Crashing to the floor, fly, finally back in the ring. Fish hits top rope Falcon Arrow for the near fall. Fish grabs his ankle lock, but Allen counters with the last supper cradle and gets a three count. Fish then attacks Allen after the bell, calling out Kyle O'Reilly, bringing out a chair. O'Reilly tries to give him the ring. Lights go out and Sting returns. Um, Sting takes out O'Reilly. With a groin shot and the bat, Allen then goes with the leg and hits a coffin drop. Sting wrenches Fisher's knee. Baby faces stand tall. And uh, Moxley and Martin and Fish and Allen are worth watching. But at the same time, certainly the match is, I don't know, I guess I'd say less than uh, what you'd expect if this were 10 years ago. But anyway, we'll be back with more right after this.